Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today we are talking about AI advances in health and medicine, including a new multimodal model from Google, as well as research inspired by Jurassic Park. Cesar de la Fuente is a presidential assistant professor at the University of Pennsylvania. Recently, he tweeted, My lifelong dream has been to use machines to accelerate discoveries in biology. Using AI, we discovered antibiotics in Neanderthals and Denisovans, our closest hominid relatives. Molecular de-extinction opens new avenues for drug discovery. So I first saw this reported in Nature, and the piece was called AI Search of Neanderthal Proteins Resurrects Extinct Antibiotics. So this is obviously, as someone who's interested in both AI and deeply in history, pretty much the most clickbaity catnip type of title you could imagine. However, the research is useful for much more than just a good article title. Nature.com gives the context really simply. They write, Antibiotic development has slowed over the past few decades, and most of the antibiotics prescribed today have been on the market for more than 30 years. Meanwhile, antibiotic-resistant bacteria are on the rise, so a new wave of treatments will soon be needed. I wasn't joking when I said this was inspired by Jurassic Park. De La Fuente said, We started actually thinking about Jurassic Park. Why not bring back molecules? Now, the specific molecules they were interested in were peptides. Peptides are a short protein subunit and often have antimicrobial properties. So what De La Fuente and his researchers did was train an AI model first to recognize human protein peptide sites, and then second, use that model against publicly available protein sequences from our ancient relatives, including the Neanderthals and the Denisovans. From there, they used the properties of previously known antimicrobial peptides to predict which of the new peptides from these ancient human relatives might help kill bacteria. Researchers then tested dozens of the peptides that AI had suggested to see if they could kill bacteria first in laboratory dishes, but then with six of the highest potential examples, tested them on mice that had been infected with a bacteria that is a common cause of hospital-borne infections among people. The results were mixed. The peptides halted the growth of the bacteria, but none actually killed it. And while the results might not have been a slam dunk, the research team think that one, using these high-promise peptides as a jumping-off point, could reduce the time to drug discovery, and second, they think that the AI model they used might be able to be improved to actually have a higher degree of predictive success. Now, if we started in our ancient past, we now zoom forward to our near future. On Sunday, Lior at AlphaSignalAI tweeted, Incredible news! The first generalist medical AI system is out. DeepMind just announced MedPalm M, a multimodal generative AI model that understands 1. Clinical language, 2. Imaging, 3. Genomics. What he's referring to is a new research paper from Google that was called Towards Generalist Biomedical AI. The abstract of the paper reads, Medicine is inherently multimodal, with rich data modalities spanning text, imaging, genomics, and more. Generalist biomedical artificial intelligence systems that flexibly encode, integrate, and interpret this data at scale can potentially enable impactful applications ranging from scientific discovery to care delivery. To enable the development of those models, they say, they introduced a new biomedical benchmark, which they called Multimed Bench. Multimed Bench encompasses 14 different tasks that range from medical question answering to radiology report generation and summarization. And then they introduced something they call MedPalm Multimodal, or MedPalm M. So basically what this research team is attempting to do is in the same way that we are now deploying AI models that are generalist, i.e. we can use them for a variety of tasks, not just a very specific task they were trained for, this Google team is trying to do the same thing in the field of medicine. TLDR, the researchers had some really promising results. The model showed zero-shot generalization on novel medical concepts and tasks, and even emergent zero-shot medical reasoning. Now, zero-shot refers to a type of machine learning where a model is able to correctly make predictions or decisions on data it has not been explicitly trained on. The term zero-shot comes from the fact that the model receives zero examples or shots of these specific tasks during training. This is important in the context of this generalist model, as it demonstrates a model's ability to generalize knowledge from known tasks to unknown tasks. Now, one of the big examples they used of the performance of this model in their tests was a radiologist's evaluation of model-generated chest x-ray reports as compared to reports produced by radiologists. In a side-by-side -side ranking on 246 retrospective chest x-rays, clinicians preferred MedPalm M reports over those produced by radiologists in up to around 40.5% of cases. Now, obviously, there's a long way to go, but having two-fifths prefer this generalized models version rather than a specialist-created version by humans suggests that there's a lot more promise here. Now, this relationship between AI and medicine is one that is just growing every single day. In July, Dr. Daniela Lamas wrote a guest essay for the New York Times called There's One Hard Question My Fellow Doctors and I Will Need to Answer Soon. In it, she says, 
The idea of a computer diagnostician has long been compelling. Doctors have tried to make machines that can think like a doctor and diagnose patients for decades, like a Dr. House-style program that can take in a set of disparate symptoms and suggest a unifying diagnosis. But early models were time-consuming to employ and ultimately not particularly useful in practice. However, she points, generative AI systems are different. They are not, quote, the same as looking up a set of symptoms on Google. Instead, these programs have the ability to synthesize data and think, much like an expert. To date, she says, we have not integrated generative AI into our work in the intensive care unit but it seems clear that we inevitably will. Interestingly, Dr. Lamas also points to x-rays, the subject of that MedPalm-M test, as a likely example where AI might come to the fore sooner rather than later. She writes, One of the easiest ways to imagine using AI is when it comes to work that requires pattern recognition, such as reading x-rays. Even the best doctor may be less adept than a machine when it comes to recognizing complex patterns without bias. Echoing the concerns of people in other fields where they worry that the rise of AI will undermine fundamental skills, Dr. Lamas says, there is the real possibility that doctors in training could lean on these programs to do the hard work of generating a diagnosis rather than learn to do it themselves. If you've never sorted through the mess of seemingly unrelated symptoms to arrive at a potential diagnosis, but instead relied on a computer, how do you learn the thought processes required for excellence as a doctor? Ultimately, Dr. Lamas doesn't have the answer, but in the context of an ever-advancing set of medical AIs, it's one that's going to come up more and more. That is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. If you're enjoying it, do me a favor and text one person a link to this show or another recent show that you think they would like. The AI Breakdown community is one of thoughtful, intentional people, and I'd love for you to invite someone in. Thanks for listening as always, and until next time, peace.